dear students assalamu alaikum i hope you are in good health and doing well today i am going to discuss very important disease of livestock known as hemorrhagic septicemia it is one of the top most disease in our country that causes huge economic losses every year so this will be the outline of uh, our today's presentation okay first of all the introduction so you need to know first the definition of this disease this disease is defined as an acute bacterial disease of mainly large animals like cattle and buffalo but sometimes it also affects sheep goat and camels and is clinically characterized by high fever swelling at throat and neck region resulting in severe dyspnea depression and high mortality so from this definition you need to remember two very important points the first one is the high fever in this, this disease and the second which is the most important clinical sign is the swelling of throat and neck and because of this swelling of throat and neck the animal is unable to respire and breathe properly that results in high mortality and because of this specific clinical sign and symptom this disease is also called gal khoto in urdu and as i said earlier it is one of the major diseases of cattle and buffaloes in pakistan now we come to the etiology this disease is caused by a gram negative non spore forming capsulated bacteria called pasturella multicida the pasturella, pasturella multicida has different serotypes like asian b2 african e2 but from our country point of view the serotype b2 is the most important one to remember and all the cases that are reported from pakistan are because of the serotype b2 and another important feature of this disease is the epidemics of this disease occur during monsoon season why in moon season monsoon season you know very well moon soon season is important from high environmental temperature and humidity point of view so how this disease is transmitted the pasturella multicida is the inhabitant of naso pharyngeal region of buffaloes and cattle that makes them carrier of disease organisms basically the disease is transmitted through respiratory route by direct or indirect contact with the sick or carrier animals but the disease can also be transmitted through oral route by consumption of contaminated feed and water so risk factors so as i said earlier i give the example of moon soon season so the high humidity and hot weather put the animals in stress that is one of the most important predisposing factor in hemorrhagic septicemia the other factors that put the animals at risk of causing hemorrhagic septicemia are the stress conditions like poor nutrition over exercise or over working if the animal is used for long distance transportation or for the heavy work load as they do in the villages similarly if the animal is already suffering from some other disease especially a viral disease so in that specific case the immune status of the animal is already compromised so that results in the 
hemorrhagic septicemia if the animal is exposed to infected animal or infected material. But in all these factors, the most important factor to remember is the hot and humid season. Because in hot and humid season, the animals are in stress because of the high environmental temperature. So because of the stressful condition, the immune status of the animal becomes weak. And if such animals are exposed to Prasuelum or Tocidia, so they can suffer from hemorrhagic septicemia. Now we come to the clinical findings. So as I said earlier in the first slide, the most important clinical sign of this disease is the inflammation of throat and upper respiratory tract, followed by septicemia and death. Hey, because as the enemy, this Pasuera uh, it lives in the respiratory tract. So it results in, in, in the inflammation of that area. And if the infection is spread to blood, so that results in septicemia and ultimately death of the animal if it is not treated on time. So the other important clinical signs are very high fever and in per acute cases the animal may be found dead without showing any specific clinical sign and symptom. Now we come to the lab diagnosis which is the most important part of this lecture. So as it is a bacterial disease, so this disease can easily be diagnosed by isolation and identification of Pasturella multocida on different medias like blood agar and CSY. Here the CSY stands for casein, sucrose, yeast, stract agar. And CSY agar is one of the important selective media for this bacteria because this casein in this media promotes the development of capsule. Similarly, there are some other indirectors like if we have the sample from the infected animal so we can inoculate that sample or if we have already cultured the bacteria so you can directly inoculate the bacteria in experimental animals like rabbits that results in the death of the animal after some time and the bacteria can easily be isolated from different organs of rabbits. Similarly other tests like ELISA can be done which is also a very important sensitive and specific test but it requires a special lab and special infrastructure and ELISA is an expensive test so it is not normally carried out in labs. Similarly PCR which is one of the most important sensitive and specific technique can also be used for detection of this bacteria from the samples. Now we come to the treatment as it is a bacterial disease. So if it is diagnosed on time, and if the treatment is initiated well in time with broad spectrum antibiotics, so the animal responds very well to the antibiotics. Similarly, inflammatory drugs and antiviral drugs are also given for as a support to treatment. Control and prevention. So the most important way 
to control or prevent this disease is the vaccination. And as I discussed, the importance of monsoon season. So the vaccine should be given at least one month before the start of monsoon season so that the animals have immunity against this bacteria in case they are exposed to some infected animal. So there are three kinds of hemorrhagic septicemia vaccines which are available in our country. The first one are the plain bacterines and these vaccines are repeated after the period of every four months. Similarly, we have alum precipitated bacterines that are repeated at the intervals of six months. And we also have in our country the oil adjuvant bacterines which are repeated annually. So anyone among these, disease, uh, these vaccines can be used to vaccinate animals and they have a very good result. Similarly, we can also use other preventive measures to control this disease. Like if somebody comes across an outbreak in a specific area, so the outbreak should be immediately reported to the livestock authority of that area so that the other animals who have not yet contacted the disease should be vaccinated immediately. Similarly, strict quarantine measures are required. Tracing carriers and culling animals. If the animals are seen with specific clinical signs symptoms or if they have already been tested by some uh, tests so they should be immediately removed from the herd. Cleaning, cleaning and disinfection of the farms are required. Similarly, the improvement of farm management and avoiding stressful conditions may also help in the prevention of this disease. So the for references, you can uh, visit the OI website and you can download the supporting material about this disease, about the vaccination, about the culture of this bacteria or any other information regarding to hemorrhagic septicemia. Thank you very much.